This time on One Foot Flipper, I talk about how I price things on eBay. You can't afford to miss it. Stay tuned. One Foot Flipper. Hey everybody, how's it going? Paige here, the One Foot Flipper. Uh, those of you who check, like to check the background, you'll notice there are no ketchup bottles on my desk today. At least none that I'm aware of, so starting off to a good start. Uh, today we're going to talk about how to price items. Or at least how I price items and some methods other sellers use use as well that I think may be worse or some that I will absolutely tell you are worse but before that since 90% of the views of my videos happen in the first couple of weeks it is currently the end of the year so if you have any great suggestions on uh, money I can plow into my business and the my viewers can plow into their businesses at the end of the year to get that taxable income down go ahead and post those in the comments all right let's Get it going, how to price items. First thing we're gonna do, let's look at all the absolute wrong ways that people price their items. And if you watch lots and lots of uh, YouTubers, you'll, you'll see all sorts of wrong ways people use to price their items. Or if you just look at people's stores, you can look at their stores and with enough research, you can figure out which method they're using, if any. Uh, number one uh, of the wrong ways, they search the item, they look for the highest price listed or the high end of the listed range and then they set that price thinking somehow they can get that you know that's what it's going for on ebay there's you know that beanie baby's up on ebay for six thousand dollars so it must be going for that yeah sure there's a whole bunch of them up for five dollars as well but six thousand dollars one have to, has to be legitimate you'll see these printouts at garage sales uh goodwill will sometimes price items based upon things like this and I have encountered some actual eBay stores that price this way I almost I might put a link to it down in the description but I found a store today that I almost wanted to do my entire video about how everything in their store was so ridiculously overpriced but I'm not sure if the store is even a joke I'm just not sure so I didn't do it anyway Moving on, although if they did sell anything in that store, ever, they'd make more money than me. Uh, number two very common method is they search nothing at all and just guess a price and put it up at that price. Uh, a surprisingly high number of extremely popular YouTube resellers do this. If you search the store of any of your favorite YouTube resellers, you can kind of figure out which ones price guess and which ones don't just by finding items that are very easy easy to find comps for and checking how they're priced compared to the rest of the market. And that's where you that's that's where it will give up who is price guessing on eBay and who isn't. And also your price guessers often have extremely repetitive price points. They'll just keep using the same prices over and over again, which means that they're not researching at all. And that is probably the absolute most common way people price their items on eBay. I don't do that. Uh, number three, they'll search the act active listings and price theirs in the middle of active listings. Seemingly some YouTubers do this as well. I've heard some of them mention it. It's a terrible practice because generally sold item prices tend to cluster around or below the lowest listed currently listed price on ebay they do not cluster around the middle of active listings and the more active listings are the more off that center one is going to be if there's only three of something and you price in the middle there's a decent chance yours might sell someday if there's 200 of yours and you price in the middle yours will never sell you'll be on page four forever all right now let's look at a few ways that I don't use myself, but you could make a solid argument for using them at least. Uh, first one, uh, I'll search solds and they'll price right in the middle of solds. This this is, does work. It can be a, but it's also a path to a very slow sell through rate because you don't always know the situations is why one item sold for more than another. Was it promoted for fifteen percent? Was it somebody just really wanted to buy from that specific person? Did they get the rainbow customer that everybody's looking for? Not rainbow, the unicorn customer that everybody's looking for who just buys the first thing in front of them? You don't know. Although, this method works super great if you've, if you've got 57,000 followers buying, buying your stuff. You know, you've got the, you've got the gold-plated shed 
with the extra shed on top of the shed and you're just a beautiful person in that shed that might work for you doesn't work for me I'm, I'm in a basement there's not even I'm in a basement I do have a shed my dog bit a bunch of holes in it though definitely nothing in there okay another method is they'll search souls and they will list theirs for the highest price one has ever sold for now this is a path to the lowest sell-through rate in the world but if you have unlimited space doing this would allow you to make the absolute most amount of money for the probably the least amount of work you know you'd only sell one you know you wouldn't be shipping much i'll tell you that uh another thing they'll do is they'll use any reasonable method to check comps but then they'll price theirs higher anyway it's somehow better than because i touched it you know my books are better than these other people's books somehow they're better even though i've got you know a wide i've got fifty thousand books all on uh texas cowboy rodeo but my texas cowboy rodeo books are better than the other texas cowboy rodeo books on ebay i know what i got mine is worth more i'm pricing it higher my rep people know me as a seller my reputation means they will come to me and pay more so my books 20 percent higher in market or my customers want to hear their names shouted out from the gold-plated shed so thus i'm going to price higher than market that last one actually does work by the way if you've got the gold-plated shed but i don't have the gold-plated shed i'm in a basement down by the river i met half my friends behind the 7-eleven and i'm almost certain at least one of my relatives is a cat all right uh, i got a couple sales here uh holly jolly snowman ornament uh it says veronica on it but we're going to change that to say minerva because that's what the customer wants uh that's seven dollars and six cents probably had sent an offer for it to be that strange of a price uh two sledding or or ornaments nathaniel and anthony 1370 for the pair uh it's upstairs so we'll put it on the screen garfield a garfield book all of three dollars and 28 cents plus shipping a beanie baby that comes that's also going to come with the matching card to it four dollars ten cents yeah big it's a big money day as you can see national hot rod association keychain nine dollars and seventy cents yeah big money day the fragrance of well-being music cd four dollars two cents i have no idea what this is appears to be some sort of indie indian krishna self-healing thing i scanned it and it was worth selling on its own and it sold for four dollars and two cents and an ornament that says annie and that's all i got for today now let's go ahead and look at my usual method of pricing now this method is largely reserved for items that have a specific name that are easy to search for and don't tend to be hugely condition dependent this isn't for clothes shoes vinyl records cat food or custom built fugglers this is for commodity items where you can generally find more than one already available on ebay i have found that pricing clothes and shoes is it's like black magic i don't really understand it so you need to ask somebody else about pricing clothes i hear tech and sports and daily refinement are really good at that they have buildings and storage units and strangely dressed people with mustaches bringing them clothing and they sell hundreds of items per day i'm in a basement saving up so i can get a butterfinger mcflurry and a mcrib next time they have them both at the same time so don't ask me about clothes i probably got food stains on on this shirt right here what is this shirt collector store i haven't worked there since i had two legs why am i wearing this shirt uh shout out collector store though they're great love them not sponsored here's what i do i search price lowest first note that currently lowest price then i check the solds and i'm usually going to price mine either one penny less or maybe a dollar less if it's a very high dollar item than the active listing closest to mine in condition or if all of the currently listed are above the highest price in the solds i will price mine at the highest price sold listings and it's just that simple uh let's try one we have a quickly down under dvd let's go ahead and do a little search just try it out 
Okay, so we go here to our ebay.com. For those of you who are used to using your phone, I'm using something called a personal computer. It has a keyboard. Uh, we've got a Quigley Down Under DVD we'd like to check and sell. So we're going to search for Quigley Down Under. Let's just go ahead and add in DVD. Price plus shipping, low is first. Let's go ahead to buy it now. Okay, you can buy, this one says no disc, so you can buy this movie for $4.19 shipped. So, you can just take your Quigley Down Under DVD, you could probably throw it right in the trash, you could hurl it out the front, front door and see if anything interesting comes from that, or you could attempt to put, put it into a lot with other similar DVDs, but I've had very little success doing that very little. In in general, DVDs, not great. So we're going to have to go, have to price check something else, because this obviously isn't going to work. And I know what you're saying to me right now. You're saying, but Paige, the, the cheapest, it's not always the cheapest ones that sold. So let's change this to uh, where we're going here. We're looking for uh, sold items. Uh, sold for $7.99. Now that is brand new, free shipping directly from the manufacturer. Uh, looks like it sold for $2.50, $3.46, pretty good. Buy two, get one free as well, $5.80. $10.28 new, that's probably going to be the record there. Then apparently there's combo discs and multi others, $1.55, dollars 98 for two movies, but you're seeing the pattern here, right? This stuff is selling at or near the bottom, and the few you see that are creeping above six bucks are just either pure luck, highly promoted, or they're brand new. Yeah, didn't work so well. Any media or book available six dollars shipped or less is trash. All media categories other than Blu-ray have been downward trending in price for years, and no individual item is ever likely to recover in price once it drops below $6. Instead, it's going to march ever downward until it hits that $4 worthless point in which only the charity sellers can ship it out at a profit. And once some of them gets there, it is never coming back. Uh, in general, you don't want to ever be listing anything for less than $2 plus shipping, and that's for the easiest pulls, easiest list, easiest pack orders. Really, media, cards, other things, or similar things that are flat, photo front, photo back, file, that can go into a poly bag or an envelope. And you don't want to ship, you don't want anything less than $3 for anything else that actually requires a little thought in the packaging. Because once you fall below that rate, you cannot pull and pack the orders fast enough to match fast food money. Uh, McDonald's will give you a free hamburger and you, for the and money instead of just you shipping out those books for 32 cent profit each. So why would you want to do that? Okay, so like I said, Compare the cheapest listed to the solds, and I'm generally going to list mine ju un just priced under the cheapest comparable one that's currently available. Unless there's one available that is far cheaper than the usual market for the items. In that case, I'll completely ignore that one in the pricing. That one can sell first. It's very rare that I find more than one of anything listed well below the, nor the historical market norms it's usually only one in that case yeah just price just below that second one let that other person sell theirs at half price and you'll get the next good sale uh, now when I finally go to do the listings I'm gonna hit sell similar off the highest price sold one because that's gonna be the one most likely to have the best combination of title and filled out item specifics less work for me to do and it could end up with quicker sale. Now, for harder to comp items, I'm going to research completely off of solds, not off of listeds. Other than I'm going to see if I can actually find one listed, but usually you don't. If you've got a weird piece of glass or whatever, chances are there's not another one on eBay. Let's say like I've got an, a beaver ashtray. First, I'll look at branding. If it has branding, then I'm going to search off the branding. If that goes nowhere or it doesn't have any branding, then I'm just going to search for beaver ashtray in solds. 
Then I'm going to use the rule of cool to price the item. Let's say I've got this beaver ashtray right here. I'm going to search the solds. I find two solds that are vaguely similar. Got this one right here. The Beaver State one is definitely less cool than a vintage restaurant ashtray. However, this other one, Ham's Beer with the Beaver on it, that's way cooler than the one I've got. So I would price mine somewhere in the middle between those two, probably around $20. And you can use this rule of cool with almost anything when you cannot get an exact comp for the item. Uh, now for vinyl records, I price those completely based off solds as well. I look through the solds and I use sell similar off the one that seems to be closest in condition to mine. And when I say condition, I'm mostly looking at the album cover, not at the disc itself because you can't tell by looking at the disc itself most of the time. And I avoid giving vinyl grades anyway because people, the only people who grade vinyl correctly are like the super high end, you know, vinyl nerd experts. That's not me. So I just avoid grading the disc whatsoever. And that seems to work well enough for me. All right. I think that's all I've got for today. Uh, if you happen to have any beaver ashtrays or know anyone who does, why don't you tell them about my channel? That's all I got. Hope to see you again soon.